Have you ever taken a vacation with your family, just packing up the suitcase and heading out just to get away from it all? Well, we're going to read a story today called The Berenstein Bears, Too Much Vacation. That doesn't even sound right. How can there be too much vacation? All right, look at this. They're going to go camping. But what do you see up front there? A lot of bugs. If you live in Harrison Township, you know we have a lot of bugs. All right. Let me get a good seat here. Well, that's everything, said Mama Bear, as she and sister and brother Bear held the car trunk lid to that so that Papa Bear could tie it down. So they're jamming it all in there. Not quite, said Papa, running back into the tree house. We almost forgot the camera, he said. What good is a wonderful vacation without photographs to remember it by? Good thinking, Papa, said Brother. Maybe I could take some pictures when we get there. How about me, Sister wanted to know. Of course you may, said Papa, as they bundled into the car. We're all going to take pictures of the most wonderful vacation the Bear family has ever had. All right now, everybody, buckle up and we'll be on our way. Four safety belts clicked into place and they left their safe, comfortable treehouse and headed for the excitement and adventure of a vacation high up in the wilds of the Great Grizzly Mountains. All right, let's see what happens next. It had been Papa's idea to take that vacation in the Great Grizzlies. It'll be a real wilderness experience. We'll live off the land. We're getting too soft here in the valley with all of our supermarkets and other conveniences. When he saw the ad in the newspaper, there was no holding him back. It said, try a wilderness vacation, a lovely mountain cabin, complete with a rowboat by beautiful Crystal Lake. Ah, said Papa, painting a beautiful word picture, to wake up with the rising sun and catch our breakfast from a clear mountain lake. Have you ever been on a boat? We'll find out what happens. To bathe in the sparkling water, to snack on delicious wild berries as we tramp the mountain trails. That sounds fun, doesn't it? To gaze at the beauty of a mountain sunset, then to sleep through the peace and quiet of a mountain night far from the noise of the traffic and neighbors and all those barking dogs. It all sounded great to the cubs. What kind of fish will we catch, Papa? Added brother. Trout, no doubt, he answered with supreme confidence. But Mama wasn't so sure he would catch anything. So when she packed, she took along some extra stuff, some canned goods in case the trout weren't biting and some books and games in case of a rainy day. I can almost taste that fresh caught trout, said brother, as the road led ever higher into the mountain forest. And I can almost taste those yummy wild berries, said sister. And don't forget my ter terrific wilderness stew, said Papa, as he turned onto the even steeper road. But we didn't bring anything for stew objected Mama, all we brought are some canned goods. Of course we didn't, laughed Papa. I'm talking about my special live off the land survival stew. It's my secret recipe. I make it from bark, leaves, and roots that I find in the woods. Do you think that's gonna taste good? I don't know, we'll find out. <clears throat> when will we get there, asked the cubs. Very soon, I can tell by the smell of the mountain air, said Papa, taking a deep breath. That's not mountain air, complained brother, making a face. That's a skunk. Mm. Hmm, said Papa, wrinkling his nose. 
A good time to start taking pictures, thought Mama. Pew, said Papa. Click, said the camera. There's the cabin, shouted Sister as they rounded the bend. So they're almost there. And there it was indeed, a mountain cabin beside a lake, complete with a rowboat. Of course, it wasn't quite as they had pictured it from the ad. Crystal Lake looked more like mud soup. The lovely mountain cabin looked more like a tumble-down shack. There was a rowboat, all right, but it was half sunk in the lake. Can you see that rowboat in the lake? But Papa wasn't the least bit discouraged. He was more excited than ever. It's perfect, he shouted. The most perfect live off the land vacation spot I've ever seen. Mama wasn't so sure. She noticed that there were no wires leading into the cabin, which meant there was no electricity. That's the last thing we need, scoffed Papa. What you need on a live off the land vacation is plenty of can-do spirit and lots of forest smarts, and I've got enough of those for all of us. We'll see. Aren't you wondering what's going to happen? He took a cooking pot and a folding chair from the car trunk. Here, he said, making a seat for Mama. This is a vacation. You relax while I gather the fixings for my fabulous wilderness stew. And you two tidy up the cabin, he called to the cubs as he headed into the forest with the cooking pot. So he's going to go and collect leaves and bark and other stuff. But Mama didn't expect to do much relaxing on this vacation, and she wasn't surprised to find that the cabin was an even worse mess inside than it was outside. There was, there was an ankle-deep carpet of twigs, branches, and dead leaves on the floor, and it was practically a museum of spider webs, cocoons, and mouse nests. Time for another picture, thought Mama. Scurry, scurry went the mice. Click went the camera. What's this? asked Sister as she cleaned leaves out of the sink. That's a hand pump for water, answered Mama. Just what I need. It was Papa back with his cooking pot full of stranger looking bark, leaves, and roots. A little water for my stew. He worked the handle. The pump gurgled and squeaked, and after a while, it began to squirt water. Rusty brown water. But he wasn't discouraged. Just what I need for my stew, he said. Ready-made gravy. Do you think that brown water is going to be very good? He carried the pot outside where he had prepared a cooking fire. It was very exciting for the cubs, but Mama wasn't so sure. So she made a fire inside the fireplace and warmed up a supper of canned beans and dried honeycomb. Two different meals going on. Let's see which one they end up eating. When Papa cried, stew time, the cubs ran out for a first taste. Mama followed with the camera. Here's to living off the land, said Papa, holding up a big spoon of the strange looking stuff. Then he, brother and sister, each took a taste. Ah, said sister. Ah, said brother. Pooey, said Papa. Click, said the camera. Mama Bear's supper of beans and honey, honeycomb proved very tasty. Papa Bear stretched and yawned. Now early to bed so I can get up with the sun and catch our breakfast. The sun did rise and it was very beautiful, but Papa snored right through it. The frogs, crickets, and owls had made such a racket during the night that he hadn't fallen asleep until just before the rising sun lit up the sky. You see all those words? They say ribbit, hoot, hoot. It was a very noisy night. Papa began to get a little discouraged when he went out to catch breakfast. The boat sank as, he, as soon as he stepped into it, and all he caught was a gloppy mud sucker that made snuffling noises and stared. Snuffle, snuffle, glop, said the mud sucker. Click, said the camera. 
It was Papa's turn to snap the picture when Mama and the cubs tasted the wild berries. I love raspberries. I wonder what they're eating. Mama and the cubs tasted the wild berries. The thorns were something fierce, and the berries were so sour, even the birds puckered up. Later, there was a perfectly beautiful sunset, but the bear family didn't get, didn't get to see much of it. They were too busy swatting the swarms of hungry mountain mosquitoes that swooped in from the lake. Live off the land, you say, shouted Mama as they ran for the cabin. With all these thorns and mosquitoes, it's more like the land is living off us. It began to rain just as they reached the cabin, but the roof leaked something horribly, and pretty soon they had more leaks than they had pots and pans to catch it. They spent a miserable night. By morning, they were soaked to their fur, and there was a foot of water in the front stairwell. Don't worry, said Papa. The rain can't last forever. And just as soon as I sweep out this water, but instead of Papa sweeping out the water, the water swept Papa right out the front door, down the muddy slope, and into the muddy, mucky lake. When Mama and the cubs reached him, he looked more like a mud ball than a papa bear. Say, he said, looking up at them, I have a terrific idea. Let's go home. So the bear family loaded up the trunk, put the car top up, bundled into the car, and bumped and splashed down the mountain into the driving rain. The rain had stopped and the sun had come out by the time they reached the valley and their tree house had never looked so good to them as it did that day. The next day, Mama took the film to the camera store to be developed. When the pictures came back a few days later, the Bear family wrote, wrote titles on them. They began to chuckle as they passed the pictures around. The chuckles grew to roaring laughter, and soon they were laughing so hard that they cried. Papa smells the mountain air. Then we were greeted upon our arrival by who? Those were the mice. More pictures. We tasted Papa's wilderness stew. That's when he caught the mud sucker. What was this? That's when they tasted the berries. And the last one, when Papa fell down into the muddy lake. Well, those are some memories, huh? And every so often through the years, they take out those pictures and have all an absolutely wonderful time laughing at the worst vacation the Bear family ever had. So what do you think? Do you think it worked out after all? I think while they were in it, they probably weren't having a good time, but looking back at the pictures, they remembered all the great stuff. So there's way more uh, adventures of the Berenstein Bears at your library. There's a whole lot of books that you can check out, but this one is one of my favorites and I hope you enjoyed it too.